basically going to talk about why images and why commission photography, professional photography, is so powerful and useful to your business uh, and your marketing. And uh, the sort of things we're going to look at are um, why images are so important in general, and looking at your brand and um, how to prepare a brief. In other words, how to communicate what you want to represent from your brand to a photographer. Uh, looking at capturing people, which is a really important part of your business profile. Uh, selecting the right photographer. Uh, a little bit on legal stuff, IP things and stuff like that, which is quite handy. Um, and then when, when and when not to use your own pictures. Um, plenty of time at the end for questions and discussion. And I've even got a special pun in this presentation uh, in honour of Stuart. So, so watch out for the pun alert halfway through. Right, so... <clears throat> quality images, why do we need them? Um, good quality images will draw potential customers into your website and your other marketing material. And um, we're always told how important it is to make a good first impression. You know, you only get one chance, make a good first impression, shake hands firmly, all that sort of stuff. But um, with your marketing, quite often the first thing that people notice is an image because it's the most real thing to the human eye, the human brain. So you could have a brochure or a website with really great design, really great typography, um, all the rest of it. But if there's a great big picture in it and it's rubbish, it will really let down all that marketing, all that great design money you've spent on it. So I would say it's not just good enough being the best at what you do, um, whether you're a huge brand or just an individual professional, you need to show the world how good you are. And that's, that's where professional images come in. And when you get images that are of you and of your business and of your brand, they're really powerful because they're relevant and personal to you. Um, and when you put all this together, you get more values for your bucks in your marketing. So it optimizes your marketing. All that stuff you're putting out there um, has better value. So th this really is the job of us, uh, what we call commercial photographers. So a commercial photographer is somebody who does marketing related uh, photography. And you know, our job really is to understand the brand of a, an organization or a person or a business, uh, really get to know what the DNA of that brand is, convert that into images uh, in order to communicate your messages. And the great thing about my job is that every day is different and it's very, very diverse. But we're always kind of working with the same process, you know, decoding brands, getting to know what a, what a business is about and, and creating images to represent that. So <clears throat> just put a couple of examples in here uh, that I shot. Uh, one on the left, uh, beauty spa shoot. It's all about luxury and relaxation and chill out and, ah, you know, it's all just lovely and relaxed. And then the one, one on the right is a health and safety manager for a petroleum company, which, yeah, it's very hard nosed, don't mess with me, you know, we've got to stick to the rules, no nonsense. So very, very different brands, but, you know, we had to represent those in those two different ways. Uh, pun alert, uh, make sure the photographer gets the point of your business. So uh, when you talk to a photographer, you really need to make sure they understand your business. You want to make sure they maybe do a bit of research on the industry that you're in, the sector you're in. And then what we do with our creative stuff is we use our techniques to show not only your stuff, but in a style that fits your sector and appeals to your target audience. So, you know, we use things like lighting, and background and depth of focus um, and composition all to um, set a style and set a mood. And, uh, you know, as I said before, there's lots of different ways you do that, depending on what the message is. People, really important part of your business profile and um, how you show your people um, is really how potential people will, uh, potential clients will understand your business and understand your brand. So my advice here is to, you know, have a good look at around at all the different possibilities that are out there of how you can have people photograph. These are just some of my examples and you can see how diverse uh, we shoot people. Um, and find a style that fits your brand, you know, find a, a, a portrait style that you think, yeah, yeah, that's us, that's kind of informal but professional or that's kind of 
um, kind of shows where we work or yeah that's quite bold and simple that'll work well where we want to use it and when you've established that style have everybody photographed in the same way okay they can be do different expressions and things but have consistency to it so that when you then put those photographs on a, a web page or a brochure page and you're kind of who we are um, they sit together and work well as a design so they're not only an on-brand image but they're actually working well with the graphic design of your uh, marketing material make it easy so don't be don't find photography hard these days photographers can come out to you we could build studios and boardrooms and offices and factories and things and you know you don't have to go off to a studio on a day like this in the rain get your hair messed up uh, and if you're in your own environment you're going to be more comfortable um, you've got all your stuff there and uh, you know it's easy it's simple and you'd be surprised what we can do on location and um, enjoy it here's a picture we did with uh, Jackie's business who's on the call today Caroline Health uh, you know uh, we love it photographers love it if clients have fun on the shoot we're yet yeah, we're creating serious marketing assets here uh, and that's really important to get right but we want after the shoot for you to say, yeah, that was great. We got some good shots, but we really had a good time as well. Uh, that's what we want to hear. And, you know, you can, you can bring all your stuff into it. You can do anything you want. And, you know, uh, it, it's all about kind of getting the personality of your business out there. Um, even skeletons, as I say, are good to get in photos. Then you've got to select the right photographer. So uh, selecting a photographer is tricky because uh, there's a lot of us around and um, you know we all do different things we've got different specialities we've all got our own styles so my advice is to you know have a look around uh, have a good look at a photographer's portfolio uh, make sure his or her style matches your brand that we've just been talking about but then talk to them uh, photography is a very two-way thing it's important that there's some chemistry there that you can get on with the photographer they kind of understand what you're about and it's not maths it's not just a right or wrong that's all very kind of chemical and you need to be able to sort of um, get on on the same wavelength um, and then check the nitty-gritty and then make sure the terms are acceptable um, and the licensing agreement we're going to talk about in a minute uh, make sure they're qualified and experienced find out where they're based and you know that will all go together to kind of inform you on who's the most relevant for your for your job it, it can be really difficult i mean i work a lot with marketing professionals but i also work a lot with business owners anything from big brands right to individuals and people a lot of people haven't commissioned professional photography before and it's it's hard to know how to pick a photographer and i um you know i find that there's there's those of us that have degrees and professional qualifications and tens of thousands of hours of fee earning time but there's also uh, the person who just bought a professional camera last week and decided they're a professional photographer. Um, and there's everything in between. Photography is completely unregulated. It's completely voluntary if we get qualified and do everything right, behave professionally. So it can be difficult to, to, to um, differentiate. I, I would recommend, you know, there's a lot of great marketing people in the chamber. Um, the chamber um, people themselves are also very good at understanding this sort of thing. So get advice if you need on, you know, who's a real player in this. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there who call themselves semi-professionals. And my advice is you, you wouldn't get a semi-professional dentist, would you? You know, get, get a professional. Preparing the brief. Now, this is basically you. Uh, communicating what you want to the photographer so he or she knows what you want and you know what you're going to get but it doesn't have to be a great big formal document quite often it is I'll sometimes get sort of 10 pages from agencies in London but it doesn't have to be it can be an informal conversation it's all about um, thinking about those messages thinking about the brand knowing what you want and putting a plan together so you can be really efficient really creative on the day of the photo shoot and photographers experienced photographers are very good at suggesting concepts and creative ideas of how to put your message into an image um, so you know get this together talk about it plan the shoot with the photographer and you'll find that we're we're very good at estimating how long you need for stuff so if you say well you know we want 
five headshots. We want a picture of us looking like we're working. We want to get this product. We want to get a picture of the factory. We want to get an interior of the office. Uh, or can we get a picture of the dog while you're at it? Well, we seem to be doing that. Um, we can pretty accurately say, yeah, I reckon we'll need about five hours for that. And that's going to be X amount of money. And it really helps you then to be able to plan the resources. So the resources being time, um, what you need for the shoot, the props, the people, and then not waste anybody's time. And you'll find that, you know, proper photographers are very good at combining lots of aspects of different stuff into one shoot. And, you know, you really can get a lot out of uh, a day. Um, so just put a brief together, no matter how informal it is. So you know what you're going to get and the photographer knows what you need. Locality, just thought I'd throw this one in there. Um, don't be afraid to visually show where you're based. You know, we've got a fantastic area here. And, you know, rather than on your website writing, we're based in Devon. It's a beautiful county with great coastline and lovely sunsets. And the county capital has a nice bridge. Now, just put some pictures in there. You know, don't, don't overword it. Just put some pictures on your website and it will kind of soften things up and give a kind of flavour of where you are. And a lot of businesses in the Southwest are, uh, it's part of their business DNA to be based in the Southwest. And lots of us photographers in this area have what we call stock images, images that you can buy and license for websites and brochures and things. Um, so don't be afraid to do that and have less words, and more images. It's, it's much easier on the eye when people land on a marketing uh, material. <clears throat> Now, this is proof that I'm better the other side of the camera, uh, but this is just about when to use your own snaps. And I'm not going to say just use professional photography, never use your own pictures. That's not true. There is a time and place which is actually really useful to use your own photos. And um, I would suggest that things like your kind of behind the scenes, live documentary, this is happening now type things are really good for day to day social media. Um, that's what I've done here. And I wouldn't recommend using these sort of pictures on the kind of front end shop window part of your marketing. So I wouldn't put these in front of your website or your brochure. Uh, but as a day to day, this is what's going on now. They're really useful. Uh, but still think about your brand when you're doing these pictures. So I, I shot this one when I was doing some headshots. And uh, I think I just put it out on social media saying, yeah, set up to shoot headshots at uh, Blubberington White Jones Law Firm, whatever they call. Um, but I've still thought about the brand. I, I've got the camera in there, so I'm a photographer, I've got a logo in there. I found an angle so that you can see lots of stuff going on in the background. So yeah, they're informal, but still make sure, scrutinize them before you post them, make sure they do good to your brand and they've not got something in the background that would you know, actually take away from your brand. Right, just a little bit on this. I won't go on too long on this stuff. Could go on for hours, but uh, you probably all fall asleep. So um, on the legal stuff, just my advice really is just to make sure you agree this quite thoroughly before the shoot. And you know, proper photographers will have terms and conditions on all of this, but um, you need to make sure you don't get caught out. Now, I tend to work on the basis of I set what I offer based on what my clients tend to want. But I must say the photography industry that I've trained with tend to work on the basis of um, generate as many income streams as possible and resell things time and time again. There's, there's no right and wrong side to it. Personally, I work on the basis that most of my clients want this, what I've written here. They want perpetual forever permission for all uses across all media of all the images we shoot and they want them in full resolution and they want them in low resolution so they could use them in web and print but it'd be quite legal for me to do a photo shoot that you've commissioned for your website and then when you say oh can we have those pictures in high res as well so we can use them in our brochure and our banner i could say um yep but i'm going to charge you the same amount of money again um, that would be completely legal. So I'm quite transparent in expressing in my terms, yeah, you get anything you want with them, but that's not always the case. So make sure that you know exactly when they, what you're going to get use for out of your images. 
and um, you know I, I love it when people use images everywhere um, and uh, you know that's what I allow um, also make sure photographers have all the appropriate insurances DBS um, public liability everything like that I do quite a bit of school prospectus photography so I've got like enhanced DBS's and things and you'll find that most serious photographers have got all this stuff um, uh, but yeah, just make sure you check that out beforehand and uh, everyone knows where they are. So when you've done all that, when you've got your amazing photos and you've got your um, rights to use them, uh, look at all the great places you can use them. You know, you can use images so widely, so easily these days, and you can form almost like an in-house business image library for your business so that every time you need a picture to go with a press release or a social media post or anything you're doing, you can dip into it, find a, a relevant shot. Um, I've just put this image example on there because this is a um, widely used shot. We shot this for the National Trust at one of their locations in Devon, um, just as a kind of property shoot. Uh, but they ended up using this shot on the Devon, um, Devon National Trust Guide cover. They also used it on a national campaign. They also used it on a social media thing. And I think I even saw it on the bus shelter over the road from my house. So us photographers love it when our images are used widely. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Yeah, um, a lot of photographers would then have had charged again and again and again and again for all those other things. But to be honest, you know, I just don't think it would have happened if, if we priced it based on that. So, you know, let's just be realistic. Let people use the images for what they want. And um, you know we love it when people use our pictures widely. So um, that's covered pretty much everything there. We've talked about why quality images are so important. I've had a look to look at branding and how to communicate that onto a brief, uh, how to select the right photographer, a bit on legal stuff, uh, when to use your own pictures, and uh, when to use kind of scenic pictures. So I'm going to stop my screen share in a second. Um, we can take questions, you can put questions in the chat, and if you've got anything you want to take up with me personally, look me up on social media here, or uh, just search Tony Cobley Photography on Google. And uh, that's it. Tony, I've got to ask why there was a picture of a chicken. <laughs> ah, that's the right question. That's why I put it there. So if somebody asks why there's a picture of a chicken. Uh, now I do, I do um, quite a lot of talks at um, art colleges, and uh, you know, you know what students are like. They're, half of them are asleep halfway through. So I like them to, uh, when I put that one on the end, ask why is there a picture of a chicken? It's a bit random. Uh, but I actually photographed that chicken. I was doing some portraits of a guy up on Dartmoor who's a company director and he's got this massive great house and we built a little studio in his barn and uh, we did some very serious corporate portraits. And at the end of the shoot, he just said, do you mind if I have a picture with my chicken? So, so I took a picture of him holding his chicken, and then I said, can I take a picture of your chicken on, it, on its own? It might come in handy somewhere. And there you go, that's where it's used. And it is a female chicken. Could be a hen, yes. Yes, I'm just, just saying, hashtag just saying. Hen. <laughs> Anything else? Um, so uh, I've got one or two questions coming in on the chat. Could I just start with one, uh, Tony? If um, I'm in an event and I want to take a shot with my iPhone, I've got literally a couple of seconds to think about the shot if you had to say three things bang go 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 that's what you've got to think as you lift your phone up and press the the the, the shutter i suppose what what three things should people think about as they take a photo i'd say think about it before you take it it's about anticipation events so you're generally uh, being ready for something to happen before it happens so, you know, if there's an event, you know, somebody's going to walk up to the lectern and shake hands with the prize giver and accept an award, make a little test photo of that before they walk in. And then when they walk in, you can you can make the shot. You've got the little on your iPhone, you've got the little plus or minus light thing there. You can drag it. So, you know, have a look how bright it is. And if you need to compensate to make it a bit brighter because there's background light, do that. And then, um, you know, just there's a little bit of a lag with with phones compared to cameras. Um, so, you know, just make sure you, you uh, take a few and um, get the right expression because it's all quite fast happening. But yeah, the main advice would be anticipation. Anticipation, I like it. So uh, 
the I, I you're right about the delay on the phones i've got so many pictures of my dog about 0 0.05 of a second after it would have been a great photo um you know so uh, sometimes i use the burst facility so you get a whole bunch and then and then get it but um yeah yeah okay that that's great thank you um and a question in the chat while everyone's thinking of the other questions to ask there is um uh, could I ask Tony about crediting the photographer in publications? Is this part of a specific agreement or should we all be doing this legally? Uh, no, it's completely voluntary. Um, normally, when you see a credit for a photographer in a publication, it's because the photographer didn't get paid for it and they've said, oh, can you do a picture for us for free? We'll credit you. I, I don't do that myself, but a lot of people do. Um, and then it's really, you know, normally having a big credit for a photographer on a design messes the design up. So I totally understand if a client doesn't want to do that. I do quite often get credit. I mean, that National Trust picture, there's a big credit inside the cover. Uh, they're very good at it, but I'm pretty laid back about it. Um, I'd rather get paid than get credited. Um, so get credited, great. But the important thing is getting paid. Yes. I think you you suffer like um, designers and musicians do with the could you just um, yeah. you know the, the the phrase that every designer in the world loves to hear is could you just think because it what it means is oh it's just simple you've just got to take a quick shot that's all we could you just and we'll credit you and it'll you know and musicians get told all the time well this would be good exposure for you but yeah. they all say I don't want exposure I want money. There's a great there's a great yeah. video on YouTube of a guy that goes around lots of companies asking for things for free for exposure. He goes to a restaurant and uh, architects and all sorts, and they just all think he's mad and shout at him and throw him out. Yeah. Uh, and he said, "Well, I'm just doing what you ask me as a graphic designer." But yeah. yeah, we we get a lot of it. But I just I don't know. I'm I'm I've kind of separated myself out from that stuff quite a lot. I think the lower end guys who are you know semi-professional uh, uh squabbling around with that stuff but the sort of clients i deal with uh, um you know they don't they don't mess about they want a good job and they're prepared to pay for it generally yes and it and you get what you pay for i mean there's that expression if you think hiring a professional is expensive try hiring an amateur because yeah. you'll only have to do it again i'm doing um, one next week reshooting something next week for exactly that yeah yeah, yeah i uh I, I got a friend who started a business and and asked advice about brand and photography and and no disrespect to him he couldn't afford the branding at the time but he has ever since said to me i wish i'd got a good brand at the start the design he's got is not good enough and he's trying to slowly move away from it but getting it right first time is so powerful uh, compared to the other 